G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here, and today I'm going to show you how to build the world's easiest sand pit or sandbox out of my favorite thing of all time, beer. Well, perhaps not beer, but a sand pit full of beer. That's a good idea. I like it. So what I've decided to do is to build the sand pit or sand box out of my second most favorite thing in the world. A trusty old wooden pallet. Now the great thing is, is that they're easy to assemble and they're free. You've got to love that. Now a lot of people don't do this, but the first thing I'm going to do is build a base out of old pallets for the sand pit to sit on. And the reason for that is that I want to create some drainage. I don't want the sand pit becoming waterlogged. We get a fair bit of rain here and the ground moisture is quite high. So hopefully by doing this, it'll prevent the sand pit from becoming a mud pit. So here's the pallet base for the sand pit. Now obviously you can make it any size you want. I wanted mine to be one and a half pallets long. So I'll cut one pallet in half and I'm going to attach it to this pallet here. Now all we need to do now is to do some excavating just to get it nice and level and we're ready for the next stage. last one it wasn't very hard now with the base in place and being nice and level it's time to cut down some pallets and attach the sides now as a quick side note I think I'm getting a bit too old for this caper a bit of shoveling and I finish up with a massive blister absolutely hopeless just too old and too soft give it up now the pallets for your sand pit, the ones that you want to try and find are ones that have the stamp HT on the side. That stands for heat treated. They haven't been chemically treated. So these are the ones that you want. So now it's time to cut the sides for the sand pit. I'm making mine 400 millimeters high, which is about 15 and three quarter inches. Now with a pallet sand pit, we'll have an outside skin, which is what you'll see, and an inside skin. Now the inside skin has to be solid to keep the sand in, but the outside skin can be any configuration of board you want, which I reckon can make it look fantastic. There you go, that wasn't too hard. Now it's just time to fill in the blanks. So there we have it. There's the outside skin. And you can see that I've put a thinner board in there just for some contrast. I like it. Now the back, all we need to do is fill that in totally with boards and that'll stop the sand from coming out. Now, just before I install these sides, I want to give the bottoms a lick of paint just for a bit of added protection. With those bottom boards painted, it's now time to attach the sides to the pallet base. And it's really important to get this first panel nice and level because I'm going to put a lid on this sand pit and if the sides aren't level, then the lid isn't going to quite sit right.
with the walls in place, it's now time just to tidy things up a little bit. Fill these gaps in with any leftover pellets and also put a cap on the top here. And I'm just using some hardwood fence palings because my shed is chock a block and this is the perfect place to get rid of a few. So there you go, with the capping all done, it's now time to fill in these gaps. Alright, the floor's all done, and you may have noticed that I've used any old bits and pieces that I had lying around to do it. We're going to have some garden matting going across the bottom and up the sides of this and that'll stop the sand from falling through. Okay that's all done and now it's time for the lid. Uh, slight correction, I actually went ahead and made the lid for the sand pit but after making it I thought that it might be a bit too heavy and I don't want somebody to copy it, have it come down and hurt someone. So instead I'm going to dismantle this and make a gaming wall on the back. So this is what I mean by a gaming wall. I've made that frame from the old lid. And I'm going to put some cement sheet on that back half over there and paint it with some blackboard paint. And on this half here, I'm not really sure yet. It's kind of evolving as I go. I'm thinking maybe something to do with water. Interesting. Now all you need to do to attach the gaming wall to the sand pit is to screw it down to the capping. And to finish the process off, you need to attach some timber to the back of this framework and screw it all the way in right down to the bottom of the sand pit. You need one here, one up the other end and one back there in the middle and that will really strengthen this frame. Now for the blackboard, all I'm using is this four mil cement sheet and I'm going to cut that using the cement sheet cutters. Now if you're not going to use them you can also use a grinder with a masonry disc. If you do use a grinder make sure you wear a dust mask. Too easy. How good does the gaming wall look now? Actually, I've changed the name from gaming wall because that sounds like a casino and it should be covered in poker machines. It's now an activity wall. Now, what I've done is I've got some old pallet slats and painted them nice bright colours. I'm going to nail those off in a vertical position. I didn't want to put them on horizontally because that'll create a climbing hazard for the kids and I don't want that. And you'll also notice that I've put in some extra supports or the blackboard to make that a bit stronger. So what do you reckon? I'm absolutely wrapped. It's looking really good. Now before I secure these boards with screws, I'm going to pre-drill first because I don't want these boards to split. With the slats all done, it's now time to install the blackboard. Now that looks pretty good. And to keep it in place, I'm going to put some trim around the outside and I'm just using some old hardwood fence palings.
How good's that look? While we're getting close to finishing this, all we need to do now is put a coat of paint on the front there, put a cap on the top, some weed mat and some sand. Job's done. So there you go. The weed mat's down, ready for sand. Now if you're installing weed matting, grab yourself one of these staple guns. They're an absolute ripper. Makes that a very easy job. So the idea for the water feature that I came up with was to get some clear hose and attach it to these slats using pipe clips, which I've painted yellow. I've got a clear funnel up the top here, and the idea is to get some colored water by mixing into a food dye, pour it in the top, and watch it gurgle and bubble all the way down until it comes out the end. I think the kids are gonna love it. Whoop, almost forgot. Don't forget to put a shelf in with a lip for your chalk. Beautiful. Alrighty, I think it's time to fill this thing with sand. With the sand in place, the job looks fantastic. Now I've just done a couple of quick extra things to finish the project off. And the first thing was to get some dowel and I've painted it purple. And I've attached some string to the top using some staples and I've hung a funnel beneath that. I then drilled a hole in the top of one of those slats. You insert the dowel, the funnel hangs down, you fill it full of sand and that loads your dump trucks. Now that is pretty cool. And the second thing I did was drill a hole in the top of this capping so that I can insert an umbrella for those hot sunny days. Perfect. So what do you reckon? Not bad for old pallets. Now quick rundown. We finish up, we've got some capping to sit on, we've got capping to cover any ugly joins, we've got a water feature, a blackboard, a loading dock and an umbrella. What else more could you possibly need? And also, we're putting those slats on, don't have them sitting on top of that capping. Raise them up a little bit because if you don't, they'll soak up the water and rot out. And if boards do rot out with a pallet sand pit, you can simply unscrew them and screw another piece on. And when the kids outgrow their sand pit, get rid of the sand, fill it full of veggie mix, and grow some veggies. Win-win. Great tip, knackers. And if this is your first time to my channel, please subscribe. The button is just down there. And don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. And don't go just yet, because there'll be a few photos going backwards and forwards of the final product in a few seconds time. Well, I've had an absolute ball doing this job and it's kind of evolved from the world's easiest sand pit to a slightly different beast. But I suppose that's what DIY is all about. Anyway, after all that, I think I need a cup of tea. So till then, I'm out of here. Cheers.